Routing works almost all the time. You don't notice certain routing problems because the internet structure allows the internet to route around certain problems. But let's talk about a few of the problems that can happen uh, during the routing process. And I'll talk about two of them right now. Um, the first one is called a routing loop. And a routing loop occurs when some, due to some misconfiguration or potentially some stale information that the routers have exchanged among themselves in these autonomous systems, a group of autonomous systems somehow decides to, that the best way to get a packet to a particular destination is in a circle. So a routing loop can form. So an example could be, A could uh, be configured to send packets to destination E to B, B could be configured to send them to C, but C could be configured to send them to D, which could be configured to send them back to A. And so in this case, a packet that A has transmitted, um, actually it'd probably be more likely that, that B would, D would be considered uh, to, to, to configured to send them to, to, to B or something like this, right? But a packet that A has transmitted uh, that's trying to reach E due to some sort of misconfiguration ends up in a routing loop. And um, if they're not stopped, these routers will just continue to send this packet over and over and over and over and over again between them forever. Um, uh, the IP packet, ha helpfully, has some additional information that's used to prevent this from happening. And that's called the time to live or TTL field. The way the TTL is used is every time a router forwards a packet, it decrements the TTL. The t if the TTL reaches zero, the packet is dropped. Um, when packets are originated by a source, their TTL is set to some reasonable value, like 64, for example, is, is a default I've seen used recently. So that means that that packet is allowed to traverse 64 hops in the internet before reaching its destination. If the, every time a router touches the packet, it dec decrements the TTL. And so what would happen here is eventually, the routers involved in this routing loop, every time they route the packet, they're reducing that TTL. Eventually the TTL gets to zero and one of these routers would drop the packet. So that's a simple way of avoiding the effect of routing loops. Of course, the problem with the routing loop, um, more fundamentally, in addition to the wasted network resources for this packet that's in the spin cycle, is that the packet will never reach its destination. And so that's a, that's a more important uh, problem at some point, hopefully the routing loop, uh, routing loops are normally transient, so they occur due to some sort of information that hasn't quite propagated its way through the entire network. So at some point, you can have these transient routing loops. In a, in a minute or so, that routing loop will dissolve, and the, um, ad, uh, the autonomous systems will again have correct forwarding information. And for example, C will start to transmit packets destined for E to E rather than back to D. So that's an example of a routing loop. The other problem um, that you'll hear about when we talk about routing is something called route flapping. Um, and route flapping occurs when um, a, a particular autonomous system has uh, repeatedly sort of can't make up its mind about how to route a particular packet uh, toward its destination. So an example of that would be, let's say that uh, A has two ways to get a packet to E. So one way is to go from to send it to B, to C, and then to E. And the other way is to transmit it through autonomous system D. Now normally A will prefer to use this route because it's shorter. But let's say that um, this link right here is flaky. So let's say that D periodically sort of uh, thinks that it's lost its connection to E. Every time that this happens, this route, this route goes down, the border gateway protocol has to send messages across pretty much this entire network um, so that A can determine that it has to use this route. So imagine that D says, oh, this route is down. So A says, okay, now I'm gonna route through this, this other way to get the packet to E. But then a minute later, D says, oh, the route came back up. Okay, and then A says, okay, I'm gonna do this. And this sort of thing, if this route comes up and down and up and down and up and down repeatedly, that's known as route flapping. The problem with route flapping is that it generates a lot of traffic in the border gateway protocol because the routers are constantly reconfiguring themselves. So A is saying, okay, I'm gonna route a packet uh, to destined to E to B, and then a second later back to D, and then to B, and then to D, and then to B, and then to D. Um, and every time it changes its mind, it potentially has to propagate that information throughout the rest of the internet using the border gateway protocol, and that generates a lot of extra traffic. 
So a typical way to avoid this is to just um, you know, not allow autonomous systems to repeatedly rebroadcast this sort of information. So if the link to E goes down, D can't re-advertise that link as being available for a period of time. That prevents that route um, from flapping and from coming up and down frequently. Now obviously route flapping, we want um, the internet to be robust. We want uh, autonomous systems to be able to find new routes. So it's possible that the route to E goes down, maybe somebody drove a backhoe into it or whatever, and we want A to be able to route around it. So to some degree, route flapping is an indication that the routing protocols are work working well. We just don't want that route to come and go and come and go too often.